These are beautiful devices and it can be difficult to find the right MacBook for you. Hey guys, Thunder E here. And uh, today I'll be showing you best ways to select the best MacBook for you in 2023. I have three MacBooks here that cover the MacBook line from the Air to the Pro. And on my right is the MacBook Air M2. This is a lovely device I've been using for a year. And of course is the lightest MacBook. It's called the Air for a reason. Then we have the 14 inch MacBook Pro 14. This is a lovely device, comes in space gray and silver. I have it here in silver. And this is running the M2 Pro chipset. And finally on the far left is the MacBook Pro 16. This is in space gray, also running the M2, uh, M2 Pro chipset here. Now, before we get into all the specifics and all the different things you find with these devices from hardware to ports, let's look at each one and then we'll go from there. Let's start off with the MacBook Air M2. Now, it comes in four different colors. I have it here in midnight and I love this color, but one thing to note, it is a fingerprint magnet. That's just something that the space gray and silver are just much better. It is the lightest MacBook and something you can toss up and down with that with ease and just feel very comfortable with. Now, in terms of ports, you do have one headphone jack here on the right hand side. And then on your left, you do have two USB Type-C Thunderbolt ports as well as also a MagSafe port. So you can use the MagSafe charger. It does come with a 30 watt charger. And as we open this up with the lip in front that allows you to easily open up, um, you do have this nice flushed out keyboard with a fingerprint sensor right here at the power button for you to quickly unlock the, your device. Now, the display is lovely. It is a beautiful retina display, very bright, very vibrant. I do like the fact that it's just very rich on screen and you have a front facing camera that's at 1080p. So that's the basic hardware. Now, in terms of the keyboard, I like it. Uh, feels a little bit softer for me. I'm used to uh, just much more actuation, but for the MacBook Air, that works out pretty well. And this touchpad is it's lovely, it's fantastic, I love it. Now, our second device is the MacBook Pro 14. I've been using the MacBook Air for a while. I didn't think I would love the Pro 14 because the Air is really light, but honestly, this is a whole different beast. It's powered by the M2 Pro processor and starts from uh, 1,999 and goes all the way up, depending on the configuration you want to. As I said, space gray or silver, this is silver here. In terms of ports, you've got more ports than this bad boy. Full HDMI out, you've got of course another uh, USB Type-C Thunderbolt port and then a full SD card reader. As a pro user, this is absolutely fantastic. Flipping on the other side, you also have your headphone jack, two more USB Type-C ports, they are all Thunderbolt ports and then of course a MagSafe uh, connector. And this comes with a 67 watt uh, charger with this bad boy and in terms of weight, yes, it is heavier than the MacBook Air, but it's a pretty light device, honestly, in all four respects. In terms of weight and, and feel, it's still very comfortable. Now, opening it up, this is where the keyboard is a bit different. It's got just more rate of travel on there. It feels really solid. I like this keyboard really well. Fingerprint sensor also, again, uh, on the power button so that you can quickly activate your device. The display is lovely. It's very vibrant and, of course, Gotta mention that trackpad. The speakers as well have, you can see a very clear, definite speaker grill here on the sides. And I will give you a speaker test on all three so you can hear an example of how each one actually sounds. But this is really, really good in terms of just the feel and the hardware overall. And finally, the big boy. This is the MacBook Pro 16, 16 inch MacBook for those who like that. My wife loves a 16 inch MacBook. This is what she usually likes to use, but now she's on the air. Oh, I'd love to hear how she actually feels about that. But anyway, back to this bad boy here. We've got a couple of ports on the side, as you would expect, full HDMI. We've got a Thunderbolt USB-C, full SD card reader on the right-hand side. Left, two more Thunderbolt USB-C, headphone jack, and of course, a MagSafe dock. Now, this comes with a 140 watt charging block. Uh, so of course, because of the amount of power you can get, pricing for this starts at 2,499 and goes all the way up depending on your configuration. And you can stack any of them with a lot of configurations here. Now, opening this up, uh, this just 
breathes and smells MacBook all over it. Now you've got the keyboard, which is really, really nice. I can also just tap on that fingerprint sensor to, of course, unlock. Bigger speakers, you can see the speaker grills are much larger than on the 14-inch devices. And of course, the trackpad is larger as well. Very comfortable and easy to use. All of them have a 1080p camera, and of course, the display is bright and vibrant. This is something you would expect from the MacBook. Now, let's talk about the speakers and see how well they sound on each of the devices. All right, so it's clear to see that the speakers on the MacBook Pro 16 are the best sounding and very rich. But to be fair, all three sounded really good. You just saw the increased improvement as you went along the line with, of course, the Air all the way to the 16, uh, the MacBook Pro 16. So that makes a lot of sense, but I like the fact that it was very rich audio coming from all three. Now, when it comes to performance, this is quite an interesting uh, part of things. So I ran, went ahead and ran a Cinebench on all three. And to be fair, it looks like in certain aspects there, the MacBook Air actually performed really well in terms of benchmarks, but those are benchmarks. So what does that mean for actual performance? And for me, you know, I had to throw at least one game on here. Yes, we know the MacBooks are not built for gaming and not optimized for gaming to be precise because this hardware is pretty powerful on all three. But I went ahead, installed Steam, and I put up Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the MacBook Air. Uh, the Air M2, we're able to get about 41 frames per second running at 720p or close to 720p on this device, which is solid, which is respectable, really good, better than a lot of laptops in this class. And then when we go to the MacBook uh, Pro 14, we're able to get up to 69 frames per second here, running it at 1080p. And then finally, going to the MacBook Pro 16, we're able to get about 106 frames per second running at 1080p on the MacBook Pro. Again, like I said, not optimized for gaming, getting that kind of performance. I can see how it stacks up across the board when it comes to performance. Now, you've seen other videos where they talk about benchmarks and editing and things like that, and you know how well they actually function as they move across the line. For me, I want to talk about battery life because that's one of the biggest things that I have experienced with the MacBook, especially as a PC user. You guys know I, I'm a Windows user, I use PCs all the time, but I have truly been using the MacBook Air as my main laptop for a full year. Uh, and it's really shown where this thing is truly impressive. So the MacBook Air is supposed to have 18 hours of battery life. I get roughly around 15 hours of battery life on the MacBook Air, and to me, that's impressive. But what does that mean in day-to-day? -day? So usually, if I go on a trip for uh, three days, I can take my MacBook Air, I can work with it. If I do some editing, it will last me roughly around two and a half days or so, just of light browsing, and then, of course, uh, editing. But if I'm just light browsing, three days on the MacBook Air. Now with the MacBook Pro 14, Apple says it should give you 22 hours of battery life. For me, it is closer to about 17 hours. I was quite impressed. I thought the MacBook Air would actually last longer than the MacBook Pro 14. That was impressive. Being able to use it three days while editing was for me more of the impressive part. Just going on the road and using this quite well. I absolutely love that fact. And then finally, the MacBook Pro 16, the big boy here. This was truly impressive because Apple says, look, you get about 22 hours of battery life. And to me, it was close to about 19 or so on the MacBook uh, Pro 16. This is a workhorse and that's kind of where it lands. This is a device that you can take with you on the road. You can use it for a long period of time. You have great battery life that will carry all the way through and it will do it quite effectively. Now, speaking of battery life, they all come with a single chargers. This is not an ad plug, but this is something that I want to mention. And I hope Apple does something about this in the future because I don't take that charger with me, even though it has MagSafe, 
I tend to have my own third party charger. I do have one here from Anker, which is a 150 watt charger. And I can use on this device, the MacBook Pro 16 I can use here on the Pro 14 and I can also use on the Air. Why I like it is because it has three USB Type-C ports and then one USB Type-A port. Now, to be fair, this will not charge this at a full 140 watts. It will charge your MacBook Pro 14 at a full 67 watts. So that's just something to take note. But Apple, I love to see multiple plug chargers because I have multiple devices to charge, be it my other cell phones, my iPhone, iPad, that kind of stuff. So to ask yourself the question, which is the best MacBook for you? I'm gonna break it down in just three simple statements. If you want something super portable with performance, easy to carry around, that will do the job for you, that is the MacBook Air. You do have some limitations to the amount of RAM you can do, so how much more work you can do with it, that's where you'll be limited to. And also it doesn't have as many ports, so you don't have anything more than the two Thunderbolt ports there. Now, if you want to do more work and you want more flexibility, but you still want something in that 14 inch range size, the MacBook Pro 14 is the perfect device because you've got that full HDMI, full uh, SD card reader. You've also got three uh, Thunderbolt ports. This thing is really portable and light, but also ha packs in a lot of power. Plus the battery life um, consensus on this, where you can do Honestly, in my opinion, three days of full work without needing to charge is truly impressive. Now, if you are a heavy worker, video editing, you're writing code, you're running AI scripts, all that fun stuff, right? The MacBook Pro 16 is the device for you. So the same ports you find here on the MacBook Pro 14 are also here on the MacBook Pro 16. The additive, of course, is the larger display at 16 inches, plus the better and bigger battery. So what I mean by that, of course, is the battery life is just much better on the MacBook Pro 16. So if you're looking for that higher performance, more specs, more RAM, higher configuration, plus longer battery life, then the MacBook Pro 16 is there for you. But it's impressive to see that the battery life increases as you go up the line and not decreases, which is something that we're normally used to, especially with just laptops. So. Hopefully that helped you in deciding which is the best MacBook for you in 2023. If you guys have any questions, any comments, let me know. If there's anything else you wanna see about MacBooks or other devices, leave your thoughts down below guys and always enjoy your entertainment.